What's going on, guys? I hope you all have been doing well uh, the past couple of uh, days. Yeah, I've been away. A friend of mine has had his uh, birthday uh, last week and stuff like that, so I kind of lost track of uh, just overall charts in general. Uh, but yeah, so I've been using um, a combination of, of charts here. This is a this setup is a completely different than what I'm used to actually showing you guys. But not gonna lie, like when choppy markets happen, I do prefer this setup here as opposed to uh, the other setup where I have like basically I would say about like eight to ten different indicators kind of going off at once. But yeah, all right. So I'm gonna get into Bitcoin in the one hourly instance here. So uh, I'm using a, a dynamic support and resistance indicator. Uh, that's kind of helping me find like key uh, levels of support and resistance. I do have these main boxes right here, this red and uh, green box. Uh, really what I'm seeing here, interestingly enough, is um, you could argue that this is kind of like a Wyckoff accumulation zone. Um, how these work is we do kind of get instances of choppiness where we're kind of in this rectangular box instance. Now, for the past couple of days in regards to Bitcoin, we've been just bouncing within this particular range and uh, really I won't uh, see any significant changes up until this point. But as you can see, there's this huge gap right here from this support and resistance zone given on the one hour. So really, uh, we could see a pump for like basically 2.6%. So I am pretty bullish today, uh, and I can tell you why in a little bit. Just uh, especially Ethereum, I believe, is leading the market uh, up until the ETH merge. Um, so really, second Bitcoin kind of is kind of playing second fiddle to Ethereum, and I can get into Ethereum in a bit here. But I just want to have some clo closing thoughts in regards to uh, Bitcoin. So, yes, how the um, Bollinger Bands work is basically, um, you know, this zone and this zone right here, like the top and bottom of that. Uh, basically, 90% of all price action, it's roughly between like 90 to 93% of all price action happens within the Bollinger Band. Uh, so when you see a breakout um, of, of the Bollinger Band top or bottom, that's usually an indication of a pivot zone. Um, now this yellow line here is the 9 exponential moving average, and um, this thick red and uh, green band is called the whole suite indicator. So the whole suite is basically like a, a combination of like the 55 exponential moving average and a combination with a couple of other indicators. The 9 exponential moving average is kind of like my fast mover. Um, yeah, so I do have this combination really for like choppy zones, and uh, yeah, as you can see, I um, do expect prices to continue to the upside. Why was that? Because the last break, we have wicks to the bottom of the whole suite indicator here, and uh, we haven't yet tipped the top here. Now, given how the 9 exponential moving average is pointing to the upside as well, I do feel like we do have more men, um, momentum to the upside still. And given how the dynamic support and resistance indicator is showing basically blue skies above us up until, I would say, uh, 20k, I do, I do see... Um, price eventually hitting to the top side of this eventually. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, given given what I'm seeing, I, I do like uh, the overall trajectory of of the market. Now, uh, from from a line support and resistance instance, we do have this top side uh, resistance kind of showing itself right here. So theoretically, we could um, uh, be in a uh, uh, a bearish case where this could actually be a uh, big um, uh, flat bottom triangle. I forget what these are called, but when you have a flat bottom base and it's a triangle formation, that's usually bearish. So we could theoretically see prices um, bounce from here to here to here to here and then break down, but that is not the case until we see uh, confirmed prices break below 19.5 thousand so that's not here nor there I'm actually thinking more on the upside as opposed to the downside 
Now, let me go to Ethereum, and I think Ethereum's the big winner uh, in regards to where we could actually be. All right, so uh, yeah, we had this broadening descending wedge channel here uh, for a long time, and I've been really kind of scoping out. We had this like rising uh, wedge pattern that eventually did break out, and uh, I talked about this literally, I, I was talking about this for weeks, uh, yeah, basically for like three weeks, I've been on the money in regards to this uh, broadening descending wedge here. Um, we did have this fake out to the upside right here where we had uh, hourly candle closes above it and ultimately it got rejected. But my line in the sand was 1550 and uh, yeah, price was consolidating roughly above it and uh, we're actually seeing a, a reversal from, from that instance. But um yeah, let me go to the 4-hour. It's a little bit more understandable on the 4-hour. So, essentially, um, what I'm seeing here is uh, this this light blue line is a, a, a VWAP, a Volume Weighted Average Price Line Indicator. Now, it's not a traditional VWAP. I am using the anchored VWAP, which, let me delete this and let me show you how to do that. So, um, the way that I find support is I get where the bottom wick was, and on the bottom here, you see anchored VWAP, you click it, and uh, you add it. And, you know, I like light blue, so I'm going to put it light blue. And there you go. That's how you're able to get that. So, when I saw price on the 4-hour, essentially, uh, well, it did break. Long story short, anytime I see a yellow X, I think whale manipulation. It's over-exaggerated. Um which that was the case in the four hour and if you're more in the intraday time frames on like the 15 the 5 and the one minute you'll see yellow x's all around this particular zone so i wasn't having it right so um yeah when i noticed this it can uh this this uh candle break back above the vwap indicator uh, I felt pretty confident in regards to reversal going on. So, um, yeah, as long as price is above this volume weighted average price, I, uh, I'm having a bullish bias. Not only am I having a bullish bias in regards to the VWAP, um, we did recently break above this uh, resistance from this big broadening descending wedge. Now, these are bullish patterns by nature. We could theoretically, you know, go back to... Uh, te back test certain key levels, maybe all the way up to like 17.8, 1800, maybe a right around here, 1825 or something like that. Because we never really back tested this area as resistance, we kind of just went all the way down. Um, now, from current price action, uh, as you can see, we do have support coming in at 1520. So if price were to like come back down, I would expect somewhat of a retest bounce here. Worst case scenario. But right now we do have a bullish engulfing candle. And uh, yeah, we are kind of pivoting to the upside, I would say, due to the 9 exponential moving average getting flipped uh, from resistance to support over the past couple of days given, yeah, basically a day and a half. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of resistance lines right here between 1650 and 1624, so don't be surprised if price comes all the way up here, gets rejected, starts chopping and stuff like that, maybe even creates a lower low, and then comes back up to then uh, pivot to the upside again. We are in a ch very choppy market. Ethereum's way more volatile than even Bitcoin. So um, yeah, if you're in a long right now, congratulations. Continue with the euphoria, <laughs> you know. But as, as you can see, um, there is significant resistance uh, in the 1620 to 1650 zone. So I will see. I I mean, in my opinion, that's where I'm going to close out. Um, my long position and kind of maybe uh, see a potential bounce at 1584 to then, you know, enter a, a, a fresh long position. You know, that is just conjecture, not financial advice. It's kind of just like what I'm doing, what I'm kind of expecting from the market. Could be completely wrong, but as long as price is, is above this resistance, um, well, uh, this line here, this, I'm going to turn it into a white line. Um, it might confuse you actually, shit. Okay, I'll yeah, there you go. As long as price is above this line right here, I gotta be bullish. Um, there are some caveats. Uh, some people are saying that this could be a head and shoulders pattern developing. Now, 
how could they get that? Um, let me turn this back into red, <laughs> just so I can do this cleanly. I'm going to make these, um, uh, I'll give it yellow. Yeah, make it thicker than a snicker. Okay, um, here, there it is. I'm going to turn that yellow, yellow, and potentially here. So, there are people saying that this could be a head and shoulders pattern. Uh, with some, there's some truth to that. Um, invalidation point aligns with basically, yeah, this red line. Um, now, I don't necessarily like head and shoulders patterns because their percentage rates of conversion are super low. Funny enough, um, if you trade against head and shoulders patterns, you're more likely to succeed versus actually playing with the head and shoulders pattern. Now, if you see a head and shoulders pattern synonymous with like other bearish indications, then yes, you have a li higher likelihood of a head and shoulders playing out. But if you just see a head and shoulders by itself and you see other indications of like bullish momentum, for example, then you can have a little bit more weariness. So I don't necessarily like head and shoulders patterns, but I got to take that in consideration given that we are in a bear market still. Um, so I'm going to do another yellow line because there some of them do go diagonal. But essentially, um, I'm going to do the measured move. If this were to actually play out, uh, I'm going to go to the bottom here. Uh, right there. Okay, and I'm going to turn off the extension, and I'm going to do a pattern breakout. So this, if this were to break out, I would say maybe like somewhere around here, then it would actually kind of align with um, the VWAP a little bit. So as long as price is above the, the, the VWAP, I mean, we, we are bullish, but if this um, now potential head and shoulders pattern plays out, we could see prices come back all the way down to, you know, 1450 zone roughly. Uh, possibly see wicks between, you know, 1420 uh, zone. Um, that would make a lot of sense, but there is significant support here at 1520 uh, and also uh, 1555. So um, it's hard for me to, to see that given that the whole suite is going from red to green, but uh, just something to be aware of. You have to be aware of both instances. Now, I bias, my bias is bullish given the larger broadening descending wedge pattern, okay? But the hourly and the four hour is showing a potential head and shoulders pattern. So I must uh, alert you regarding these these scenarios. But uh, yeah, as long as price is above this, this line right here, um, I'm gonna turn it, you know, uh, purple, right? As long as price is above this line, uh, I, I'm, I'm bullish. And as long as a price is above this red line, I'm ultra bullish. Um, now you are kind of late to the party. There, what this breakout has already pumped, uh, you know, at current prices two percent. It's not, you know, it's not spectacular by no means. Um, if you wish, and not financial advice, but like, you know, if you wish to put in a long or whatever, I, if if I were you, I would kind of just wait it out and kind of go into a consolidation phase altogether. But yeah, as you can see. Um, let me go to higher time frames. Um, let me go with the market cipher indicator. Yeah, so a market cipher indicator is actually showing a buy signal right here. That's interesting. Also, the MACD is showing, um, uh, it was showed a buy signal back here at September 4th, and it's been kind of just going to the upside since, and the histograms are pointing green. The the MACD indicator is below the zero line, but as you can see, it is pointing up. Uh, now, the ADX is a volume uh, indicator uh, for Bitcoin. I, um, sorry, I got a message over, over my phone. So actually how this works here, um, oh, this is Bitcoin, <laughs> my bad. I've, actually, I've never really used uh, the ADX to trade 
uh, Bitcoin. I'm more of an Ethereum junkie as of late, given the ETH merge. Uh, you can't blame me for that. But yeah, so how the ADX works is when when the ADX is above the 30 line, that just means that the move is going to be dynamic and it's going to be intense. Uh, and you can front run it if you're more risk on. Uh, you can actually do the 25. So I'm actually going to put that right there. There, close that. This is augmented. The ADX is this isn't uh, standard. So in the inputs, I'm doing ADX five, uh, DI length five and five. So it's more sensitive. So it's more fast moving. Uh, anyway, but yeah. So this ADX doesn't uh, indicate trend. It just indicates intensity of volatility. So uh, I myself, I like to wait for a move to occur when this blue line is pointing up and it is above the 30 that's when i'm confident now if the whole suite indicator is red and price I mean, and the adx is above 30 then i'm gonna short now if the whole suite is green and this thing's pointing up you know i'm gonna long so that's kind of like how how i like to use it i'll um in this particular chart layout i do have momentum oscillators with the volatility indicator uh and yeah with exponential moving averages and all that kind of stuff and uh i do have dynamic support and resistance on this uh of, of course with the market cipher indicator here um you know so it is an interesting combination nonetheless but i really like this this setup for for choppy markets and really for like scalping not gonna lie i like to use this on the 10 minute and the 15 minute um and let me just show you regarding you know on the 15 minute it it's crazy it's crazy cool um so far my win rates are pretty good with this setup here um but um overall like yeah like you can't necessarily stick to one chart layout frankly i myself like to have multiple chart layouts this i have like four of them but anywho uh this one has been working really well for me in regards to scalp longing and scalp shorting um i think yeah i believe it was on bitcoin uh, i think the last trade setup that i had discussed uh, the one that i did i did get stopped out on that one i'll be honest with you on that i don't know where it was i think it was uh, it was like a, a triangle pattern that ultimately didn't play out and it just broke to the downside and i got stopped out that's where I was the last time, but I did open a short and then I did long after that. But yeah, anyway, yeah, sorry. It was, it was a crazy week last week. Um, anyway, um, I'm back now. <laughs> I'm going to try to be consistent with this stuff. I mean, it's really hard. I, man, you, I, I commend YouTubers for consistency like every single day. This is tough. It's tough stuff. And I respect uh, I respect everyone who participates in this realm and just, you know, wants to uh, share their knowledge and stuff like that. But anywho, I'm going to close it out. I just wanted to give you this, um, yeah, this, this information. I feel like, you know, we are in an uptrend overall. Um, now, we do have some breaking points, as you can see. I would argue for Ethereum, and Ethereum is the leader of the pack right now. Um, given that the ETH merge is happening very, very soon in late September. Also, Cardano, the Vassal hard fork is, is coming in. If you're an altcoin fan or if you're a Cardano fan, the Vassal hard fork. Now, given the uh, every, every um, upgrade that Cardano has done, it has been a buy the rumor and sell the news event. So there's a run up, there's a pump before the event, but on the day of, there's usually a massive dump, massive crash. And this is happening in late September. So um, right now, I'm bullish up until late September, frankly, until after the merge, because there's not a much news uh, in store for the crypto market after that. And unfortunately, no news is bad news. Um, but anywho, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time, and I uh, wish you well. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video if you haven't uh, done so already. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Are we going to continue pumping? Are we just going to like ape until the, the ETH merge? Or are we just going to like actually get rejected and hit that head and shoulders pattern to ultimately hit lower prices? I would love to know your opinions. Take care. Have a good one.
Bye.